Hey everyone, this is Jessica Gabesi, and I'm going to be going over some of my images and just the process and editing and layers I use and all that good stuff, just so you guys can get an idea of how I really do my editing. Now, I had someone ask me, do you think photo editing skills play a big role in how good a person's photos are? Or can they pull it off with just using the right camera settings? Which photo editing software do you recommend for beginners? So I'm going to begin by answering this question. Do you think photo editing, photo editing skills play a big role in how good a person's photos are? Yes, I really think that editing plays a huge role in photography. And I think that every person should know how to edit to a degree. I'm not saying that you have to... If you take a picture of someone dancing, you have to make it look like they're on the freaking moon. You know what I mean? Like, just editing the picture so it looks clean. It looks like something, like your own personal style, you know? When I take a picture, I don't like to just put it out how it normally would just come off of my camera. Because you can do so much to it. You can add your own style and you can add in cool stuff. You can, some people do photo manipulations with pictures, which is what I used to do. So you just make it into your own thing. You can create your own you can create your own image from your photography and so um, I do think photo editing skills play a big role because let's say you take a bad picture, you can always save it with really, really good editing. At least I mean I think so. Um, can you pull it up, can you pull photography off with just using the right camera settings? Yes and no. If you take a picture that's with the right settings from the beginning, it's going to definitely help you in the long run. But, I mean, it's not going to help you retouch skin or get the perfect lighting, like if there's a shadow on her face. You're going to have to edit that out, or you're going to have to fix that eventually. So, edit, um, knowing how to use the right camera settings helps you with the foundation, but you have to obviously edit and fi finalize your foundation. Um, and which photo editing software you recommend for beginners? Um, I started off using uh, Paint Shop Pro 8. Well, actually it was 7, and then I upgraded. <laughs> so I did not want to learn Photoshop when I first started to do this, and I resented Photoshop, but I ended up learning it thanks to my friend Ashley. The dentist <laughs> so I do everything in Photoshop now and right now I'm using CS5 or CS4 I think I don't know. CS5 so Adobe Photoshop 5 learn to use this program I rarely use Lightroom I actually don't like Lightroom at all I think it's just I don't know it's I'm just not a Lightroom fan I think that you can just do so much more in Photoshop. Lightroom is kind of like the easier alternative, which I would recommend to um, beginners because it is a good. It's good to learn process and everything, but it, it is better for batch processing. But we can talk about that later. So I'm going to show you guys all the layers and everything in the beginning. So let me show you the before for this picture right here. So I'm going to turn off both layers. And this is the before picture. And let me show you guys after retouching the skin and the hair. And then with the colors. So as you can see, there's two steps. The retouching skin and hair, flyaways, and then I add the color always. So I know I could have retouched the hair, but let me tell you something I totally hate. Fixing hair, it's one of the worst things that I'm still learning how to do, and it, it just, I, it kills life, honestly. Like, who wants to sit there fixing people's hair? Like, I could have just, I could have fixed that, but I think I was just being lazy. Oh. So, let me show you guys my color layers. Oh, by the way, if you want to learn how to retouch skin, I have a video on that. So, go and look through some of my YouTube videos. Let's look at what I got here. So, let me go layer by layer, actually. Let me just delete this one because I'm not using it. So we're going to go all the way down. So the first layer is a color fill, which I use a lot. 
set to multiply and then we add some layers some layers some levels oh my god Whew. I don't really like making videos where I have to talk for long periods of time because I just say all this weird stuff and then I added in I'm gonna show you guys the curves because this is very important so I'm using a curve that really brings up the grays I think I don't know fancy term for that so as you can see it did make a huge difference to my picture it gave it it like lowered the contrast I think and this is a trick which I will be showing you guys um, I use like a warm yellow and then I add the background layer to it so that it only shows through this the certain areas it doesn't show through the whole picture because look if I take the mask off I'm going to show you what it does. It fills the whole picture, but I just added the background. Tutorial on that later. Then my favorite gradient map, which adds some color and then curves. I don't know what that is because it's not really doing it. Okay, well, I could just delete that. But And then we have another gradient map. It's a very, very slight difference, but you can definitely see it. And then I'm, I got rid of all the color from the white, so the white comes out a little more. It like pops the white out, as you can see. And then a selective color. I think this was more towards the yellows. Yep, yellows. And then I use a selective color because I, I'm going to show you guys how it looked. Like without the, with the background by itself and then with the whole picture. So I didn't want it in her face, but I liked how it looked in the background. So I used a mask and then I erased her out of it. And then here's the fun thing that I like to do. Just add little bits of light into the picture. And again, I have a tutorial for this, the lens flare. So check that video out if you want to learn how I did this. And then just adding some soft light brushes to kind of pop some more color in here. And there's some orange. And then um, some selective color to get rid of some of the color. And then last but not least, my favorite, a gradient map, the black to white. So that is how I got this image. It's all really about just playing with it and experimenting. Like This will take hours for me. But um, it's I really do recommend that you learn to use every single layer style that you can and so you'll know exactly what you want to use so let's move on to another image this one is one of my favorites and someone actually asked me about this picture so that's why I'm doing this so I'm gonna show you guys the before for this one I'm gonna zoom in here so I actually did not do any editing to this because she had a veil over her face and Guys, I'm not that professional. Like, I literally can't get in there. And I there's nothing really to edit for me anyways. So, um, let's open up this and let's see what I did right here. I'm really bad with organizing this. Damn. I need someone to, like, come organize this. I'm like an, I'm like an online hoarder. Like, look at this. Look how bad this is. So, there's a vignette around this. Let me zoom out to show you guys. It's very, very subtle, but it really makes a big difference. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like without the little light bubbles, if you will, around the image. So as I'm turning it on and off, you guys can see there's a huge difference. And this is actually just a, radi a radial um, gradient. So play around with those. They're my favorite. Then I used, let me do this thing again so you guys can see. So then I added on some curves and then some uh, adjustments in selective color. Then there's uh, lightening the picture by um, bringing up the, con the brightness. And there's a huge step right here where the tones or the contrast is pulled back so this really sets the mood for the whole image and then there's a black and white tint 
which you can do by literally just going to gradient map, putting it black and white, and doing it that way. And then I added this tiny multiply layer with yellow. And then I went in here to my blacks and then pulled back some yellow. And then I used a tiny bit of, of curve and then the exposure, I brought it down just a little bit and there it is. So it's, again, this is really all about just adding, taking away layers. And let us move on to my last image, this one. So let's see the before. There's the before. Let me zoom in here. <coughs> and then this is after retouching. After retouching. And then this is after adding the color. So let's check out these colors right here. There's actually not really that many. Um, there's one technique that I really like to use and it's the black and white where it'll just give, it, it really just does change your picture. I'm going to do a tutorial separately for this technique because I feel like it's very simple but it's so effective. So let's take away all of these again. So after I use the black and white, I set it to screen. And you'll think it's so washed out, but that's what we want. We want to pull back the colors so that we can kind of um, add some more contrast in a different way. So then I use selective color. And then I set it to soft light, which really made it pop. So, And then, God, what is this? There's even more. So then I had to add more color bubbles because that's like my thing, I guess. I added some colors in here, purple, soft light. I'm going to literally have to make a new tutorial just for that one. Um, I added some a little bit of selective color, which I love, to 41%. Playing mostly with the reds, I think that's the only thing I really played with. And then vibrance. Added 24 right here, and then I added a color fill layer, which is um, this shade of blue, and I set it to lighten, which filled in all the black to make it blue. I'm really a great teacher <laughs> with my uh, terminology. And then I just, I don't, this, why, did I, why do I have layers that I don't have anything on? This is getting deleted. Okay. And. I guess I added some I added some light to her face and that's that. But look what a huge difference that made. Only with a couple look how many that's literally like five layers. Like taking this away, that's literally five layers and it changed the the image quite a bit. So I hope you guys took away something from this tutorial or more of a walkthrough. And I will be making more tutorials to come. If you guys would suggest some that you'd like to see, please go ahead. It's very helpful because then it at least gives me something, like a direction to go in. And so I guess that's it. So please suggest again. And you can follow me on Instagram at Jessica Kobesi. And I will post the link. And I have a Facebook and all that other stuff. I have everything. I have everything except for square because I don't like stalkers, so. Yep, if you guys need any help with anything, shoot me an email or leave a comment. Thank you for watching.